Why do I believe in the deity of the Messiah? I believe in the deity of the Messiah because what Isaiah said, but what Jeremiah said, not because what the Christian uh, Catholics in the fourth century said in the days of the Emperor Constantine. Je Isaiah in Isaiah 9, yes. you know, from verse 6 and 7, he's the one who says, Unto us a child is born, right. unto us a son is given. And his name will be Wonderful Counsel, the Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Mighty God. How could you say to a boy that is born in Jerusalem, yes. a mighty God, an everlasting father? Mm -hmm. In other words, if Isaiah can say that that boy that was born in the land of Israel, from the family of David, from the seed of Abraham, if he says that this boy can be called mighty God, who am I as a Jew, like Isaiah? To say that he is not a mighty God. And that he is not an everlasting father. I didn't say that. Isaiah said it. I don't need the Christian creeds and the Christian dogma. In order to believe in the deity of the Messiah. Jeremiah in chapter 23 verse 5 and 6. Very wonderful passage about the, the, a shoot from the house of David. Uh, salvation will come to, in his day to Israel and to Judea. And his name will be. The Lord our righteousness, yud Hey vav Hey, the Tetragrammaton, Jehovah our righteousness. That's what his name will be from the house of David. This, this plant from the house of David, this king of Israel is going to be called Jehovah our righteousness. Am I uh, less than Jeremiah? If Jeremiah can say... And almost all the rabbis agreed that that passage in Jeremiah is a messianic prophecy. If Jeremiah can say that this plan from the house of David is um, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah our righteousness, who am I to say that he's not? Right. I cannot deny that. On the other hand, what we have today in the Christian world is a total confusion. It's a total confusion because of the, the doctrine that was conjured up by a committee of Gentiles. Not a single Jew in Nicaea is a half-truth. And you know every half-truth is also a lie, half-lie. And it's a half-truth because they forgot a very important element of the Bible. They forgot that there is total equality between the Messiah, between Yeshua and the Father... And the spirit, but at the same time that there is total equality. Whoever has seen the father has seen the son. Whoever has seen the son has seen the fire. Total equality. They're equal. But at the same time that there is total equality, the New Testament, Yeshua himself in John chapter 14, verse 27, 28, says the father is greater than the son. So there is an equal sign. And there is a greater than sign. From the words of Yeshua himself. Paul makes it even clearer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. He says the head of Christ is God. Does Christ have That's a head? Right. He has a head. Somebody is above him. And the head of man is Christ. And the head of woman is the man. A vertical hierarchy. The head of Christ is God. The head of man is Christ. The head of uh, woman is men. There is a vertical hierarchy. This element of equality and hierarchy is the only element that can allow us to still confess Shema Israel Adonai Echad. Ushmo Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one and his name is one. And Paul addresses this so many times, like in 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Like my favorite text, especially when I talk to, uh, to Gentile brothers and sisters, comes from Romans chapter 3, verse 29. And it said, Paul asked the question from 29 to 31, very important text. Yeah, is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? For we have one God and one Father. That's the Apostle Paul. And it's repeated Many, many times in the New Testament that we have one God and one Lord and one Messiah and one Father. This truth is this carnal, central truth of the whole Bible. 
if we believe in more than one God ultimately, without the hierarchy that Paul and Yeshua himself says in Gospel of John chapter 14, if we believe in more than one God, by definition we're idolaters, polytheists, not monotheists. And Jews have given their life, they have been killed for their monotheism. And I am not going to compromise on this issue in any way because I'm standing on the word of God. From the words of Yeshua himself, the words of Abraham, the words of Moses, the words of King David repeatedly in the Psalms, there is only one God. And Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, 8, key, key text says, there is only one God and I am the only one and there is no one beside me. I created shalom and I created evil or calamity or disaster. I made light and I made darkness. That's the one God that we believe in and we stand on the word of God from Genesis to Revelation and we don't have to accept what these priests that ended up poisoning each other in Nicaea have decided and we are judged not because of what we believe the Bible says. We are judged because we don't believe what these Catholic priests said in the fourth century. That's the issue. And I hope that you can read your Bible and see that the central truth of the whole Bible, there is one God and Yeshua and the Holy Spirit are equal to him because here is the, the legal aspect of this issue. A messenger is always equal to his sender. And Yeshua is more than a messenger because he was there before the creation of the world, also according to Judaism. Yeah. And he was there when God crowned King David and promised him that his seed will sit on his throne forever. And he's sitting on the throne of David even now and coming back. 